this is a video of her apparatus printing uh, to go along with Chong Chi Tai Chi. Um, Master Chong's Tai Chi, uh, which he's passed away in the 1980s, but um, his approach to training was um, maybe a little different than, let's we'll say, the standard Tai Chi approach, meaning uh, strength is very important as well as mobility. A lot of people that come to Tai Chi, they're older, it's recommended by a doctor or it's recommended by a friend, you know, hey, this is a great exercise, you know, because we're, you know, they're in their 60s or 70s. And um, that's, that's great, and it is, but we can also push beyond that and take those movements or the way that we practice the movements and, and, and improve upon what we, what we have. I don't need to do Tai Chi just slow and methodical and everything has to be like this. A lot of times, in my logic, um, if the person is, we'll say, 70, and they have, uh, um, uh, for better word, they've been pretty inactive, you know, for maybe the last few years. Maybe they retired at 65 in the last four or five years, just been sitting around the house, not really doing too much. They haven't really been too active. Um, yes, you want to start out with general movement and things like that, and, but it doesn't mean that you have to just do, you know, the form at, uh, say, the long form, and it takes you 22 minutes to do it, um, when you could do the same form in 8 or 10 minutes. It's that vigorous movement is still a soft movement, but it's the, the, the vigorous movement and moving faster than I maybe potentially would normally would. A lot of people, as they get older, they, they, uh, they take shorter steps. Um, they do things in a more uh, slower more slower way. And a lot of that has to do with stiffness and the tightness in the body or weak muscles or you know, instability, things like that. And with my teaching of Chong, Chong's Tai Chi, and uh, my teacher, because my teacher taught me a lot of these principal ideas that I'm trying to share with people, well, most of them. We'll say. Um, we want to look at that strength and we want to look at mobility. So um, those are more important than, um, yes, you want to dedicate your time to learning the material, but I want it to, I want to maximize the usefulness for myself. Not just, it, the more I can do that, the more value I put on. So these things here, that being said, um, when we do our forms, a lot of times it really, you know, if you're doing it right, you're not just shifting back and forth, right? But I'm really engaging the legs when I'm doing my movements, or um, I'm really trying to twist with the core, and um, I, I'm, I'm doing all of these things for my, my legs and my, my lower portion of my core. Uh, I mean, some of my spine and, and my shoulders is very relaxing, but <clears throat> I'm, not doing a, I'm not doing too much to load the arms. And so we're going to use these things. So my 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 Sifu, uh, he shared with me about utilizing the bricks. And Master Chong he used to utilize bricks to do his Tao Bao and his uh, his Tai Chi and, and things like that. These are just pavers. And uh, the thing with pavers is that uh, they have some weight to them, but they're kind of coarse, the edges and things like that. You can find like older bricks, like the. You know, over a play time, like maybe you know, buildings being torn down or something like that. Um, gets you some of those. These are a pocket piece at Lowe's or Home Depot, and um, they're easy to work with, you know, to do your movements. So, like, as people get older, they go in and take, sometimes they take these assessment tests. They want to see your group strength. They want to see if you can hold one leg up. You know, how long does it take you to get up off the ground? Those type of actions like that. And what I'm trying to do with Chong Tai Chi is I'm trying to address those things, right? Grip strength, uh, arm strength, leg strength, mobility, um, the, the, you know, the range of motion of the body, all of that stuff. And um, these things work great. So when you've got something like bricks like this. Um, these here, they're for walking or for running. And I think these go from like one to five pounds. Right, so these are two pound ones. Um, you can do your um, your moving postures. 
your Tai Chi walking even, you know, I can have these in my hands and, you know, if I just want to work on my, uh, my footwork, right, my Tai Chi walking, I can do them this way. Or maybe I'm working, uh, moving postures, right, and I have them here and I use them in this way, right? These are soft. They're kind of, it's, they're not exactly that cheap. You can get these at probably most uh, sporting goods stores. You can get them at Amazon or eBay. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you could get you a set, it might be easier, right? Uh, like these are three pounds. And it's, it's like a big difference between these two pounds, right? Uh, these, I picked these up at a garage sale. Uh, they're not like these, right? These were shot and they're six pounds. These, I don't know, maybe they're a pound or two. Dan skin, man. So you can imagine how old these are. That was, uh, that was when uh, aerobics was super popular, so these things are probably, who knows, 30 years old or something. Anyway, they still work good, right? But see, I can, I can grip with these, right? And uh, they're not too heavy. Um, and then, uh, say you can't get your hands on some brakes, you can't find something like that, a garage sale, uh, something like a shot, and these are expensive, you know, 25, 30 bucks a piece, or something like that, right? And you can always, you know, say you had a couple of, uh, of, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, Ozarka or Nestle's waters, right? You know, uh, you know, the one, the, they're 16 ounces, so that's one pound, right? So if you're older, or maybe that's you know too heavy, or you don't have the money to afford that, or you, you live somewhere where it's, I don't know, maybe it's hard to get to the store. You can grab you a couple of waters like that and, and have those in your hands. Um, so I mean, things, you, things that you could do, um, you know, you could use wrist weights, but I don't really like to use the wrist weights because I really want to work on my grip, my grip strength, right? And uh, so that's what these things were for. Uh, even if you had maybe some, you know, just some dumbbells, some one or two pound dumbbells, you could use those too. The thing though is that, <clears throat> let's say if this was like a dumbbell, this is 50 pounds, right? But, uh, it's the, the width of it, right? I can put my whole hand around it. And so it's easier for me to pick up this 50 pounds. If I'm using something like this, it's harder for me to to clasp my hand around it to support it, right? So I have to I have to use more of my my forearm and my hand to do it. The same thing with the, the brick. Um, your hand, I mean, you can I guess hold it like that, but uh, it, you know, you, it's you can't really uh, you know close your hand on it. So it, it makes it harder, even though it's only a, a, a pound or two. Um, so uh, another way to practice these is with your forms. So back, these six pound ones, um, you can do like your um, a short form, come here, and you know, a lot of people that would, uh, they do Tai Chi, oh no, you shouldn't do any kind of weight-bearing type exercises. Well, to me, most of the people that are uh, coming to Tai Chi here in the U.S., the, the core of them, they're doing it to improve their health. And I'll go back to those two things again. I need mobility, and I need strength. And there is nothing wrong with me practicing Tai Chi and utilizing apparatus to do the movements. It's not going to make me stiff and rigid and all of this kind of stuff. Uh, it's not going to do that. Now, if you're uh, learning, a, a, let's say you're learning a new routine, I don't know that I would do, do this if I was learning a new routine. Maybe I know the routine, and I practice it, and I put these in my hands, and you'd be surprised that how much, these aren't just working my arms. These are working my back, my core muscles, 
I have to be able to support this. And like I said, if you're you're very new and you want to try to you know be more engaging, right? And I do my walking, or I'm just doing simple postures. That being said, um, of course we want to be able to relax uh, when we do the Tai Chi. That helps us to engage. You know, if we're stiff and we're, you know, our joints are locked out, we're not going to really help to strengthen those stabilizing muscles and the connective tissue and keep the joints loose so kinetic energy travels through. But I'm not going to use something like this and uh, you know, block my joints. I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm not going to do that. I wouldn't do it anyway. So, I, I, part of me says that's kind of a fallacy. Again, you're coming to Tai Chi and you already have mobility issues or strength issues doing the form like this. And just doing it, doing it super, super slow all the time. It's not. You need to invigorate yourself, right? And if uh, doing it so really stresses my structure, my stability, and my balance to a degree. But at the same time, I want to get that blood pumping more, and I want to be able to to use those muscles. I want to I want to, to work the body. It would be like walking, right? And say, uh, I don't know, you want to go for a mile walk, and you did the mile walk like this, right? And like, you just do everything. So you probably wouldn't do that. You, know, you would probably put some kind of pace to yourself. And if you're older and you're walking slow, if you had somebody to encourage you, you know, let's walk a little faster. Let's walk a little faster. It gets that mobility going. It gets the heart going. It gets the blood pumping. It's, and, and doing it slow, it won't not do those things. But I need that balance. I don't want to just do it slow. I want to be able to do it slow and fast. And you will see that your body has a, uh, weaknesses on both points, right? So that with Chong Chi Tai Chi, we do the forms uh, slow, we do them fast, we do them with a varied speed, we do them with narrow stances, with wide stances, high bases, low bases, uh, more like classical Tai Chi. I'm not talking about uh, Government sports forms that have been created since the 1950s are some of the more modern family forms. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about classical stuff. And um, that is the way that they would practice this stuff. Not just one way. And most of the time it was postures broken down and then something was integrated together and became a form. And um, so uh, this is one way, one apparatus group, we'll say, to work. And again, it's helping with my grip, it's helping with my arm strength, my core, and when I have to do things, something where I lift up, it expresses my stability as well. Uh, so there's several uh, exercise pieces. It doesn't matter if you are 20 or 30 or 40, there are apparatus that you can use that are going to stress your muscles. And uh, if you're older, something you know, something in this weight range, it may be just right for you. Um, there's other, again, other apparatus to help us with with other parts of our bodies. But this one is a great one to start with. Again, even if you only can grab up a couple of 16 ounce water balls, which is a pound each, right, and do some of your movements with that, um, I really think it will um, it'll benefit you in the long run. Um, and like I said, um, there are literally maybe a, 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 more than a dozen, we'll say, traditional styles of Tai Chi. But then there are dozens upon dozens of different variations of Tai Chi and how it's applied. And the approach that we have with Chong Chi Tai Chi is this. On one hand over here, we're trying to do everything we can to maximize the health of the body 
with an emphasis on mobility and strength. On the other side of it, we're going to use those same things over here, but to also to develop our ability to use it for self defense. And uh, so it's a great balance. So whether you started at 35 or you started at 65, there is a, a way in the door, and then there's all kinds of things that you can develop and then keep so that you can maintain your bottom line and hopefully go above that. So anyway, I hope you liked the video. Like I said, there'll be you know, maybe at least five videos like this. If you're just if you're more of a swajow player and not so much for the Tai Chi, there's probably uh, well over a dozen apparatus that you can choose from. Um, you know, something like that, um, like a stone block, right? That 50 pound block of metal right there. Uh, there's all kinds of things that you can you can use to help to strengthen the body and through movement, right? Using machines in the gym where they're fixed and you don't have to work your balance. You know, you don't have to really use your structure to support this stuff. It may give you more muscle, but it's not going to help you so much to, in my personal opinion, strengthen the connective tissue enough and really work your stabilizer muscles and help with that stability aspect um, that you're trying to shoot for, especially if that's one of your goals is to get stronger because maybe you've, again, you've retired and you've, you've been pretty lax today about your exercise for a period of time that's too much, we'll say. So anyway, I hope you liked the video. and. Um, I'm not trying to say, and I will say this, I'm not trying to say that these guys do it wrong and I do it right, or these people do it, uh, you know, terribly and I do it the best. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying to you, if you do Tai Chi and you're learning uh, Chong, awesome. If you're learning another style and you're curious and you watch this video, and you, if you're in a certain age bracket, think about what I'm saying about um, your overall strength in your overall mobility and well, are you addressing all of those needs so um, thank you